there, my name is Margaret Johnson and welcome to Sanford University. You're standing in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders, AKA Speech Language Pathology and Audiology. One of the things that we'd like to do with this tour is just to introduce you to our audiology program, which is our Doctor of Audiology program. Um, we are in our second cohort right now, and I just wanted to show you around and give you a tour and see if you think you might like to come to school here. Let's go. As we're walking up, what you can see is that we have two audiological suites. This one that we're walking in is really more geared for our pediatric patients. And so as you see that we've got some toys, we've got little tables that they can sit at as they're waiting and they're doing different types of activities. And so then as we walk on in, this booth is arranged a little bit differently for kids. Um, what you see on the walls here from an equipment standpoint is known as VRA, which is Visual Reinforcement for Audiometry. What you know is that if you have small children in the booth and it's soundproof, it can be a tad scary. We also don't really want their moms and their dads in here with them. And so what we have to do is find a way to be able to re reinforce them when they hear the stimulus. What I have the power to do is to go, hey, nice job, look at that train. Or I can do that for their different ear. Hey, look at the sailboat in the sun, how fun. Look, there's a bear and I can keep them really, really kind of pumped up because the quicker that they respond, the quicker the reinforcement comes back on. We're gonna go out of this booth now. We're gonna go into more of our adult booth where we do see some of our geriatric patients. Our booths are all handicapped accessible, so um, wheelchairs, walkers, whatever you've got, we can manage that. And so again, just our second booth, um, this is where we do have more of our diagnostic equipment. So we think about diagnostic tympanometry, so that we can check really the, the accuracy of what's happening from a middle ear standpoint. And as we go into this booth, really this is just more the, your typical booth where you'd have the adult come in. We can put the headphones on them um, so that we can talk with them directly. We also can do both air conduction and bone conduction in here. So it's kind of a full service type of evaluation that happens in here, very comprehensive. We're gonna walk now outside and one of the things that I will tell you as that we're walking is that our students are taking part in a lot of simulation that happens. Simulation is a very, very new teaching technique. And so Sanford has just been, um, has been afforded the opportunity for us to have some of these simulation types of things. And so our first year students, as they walk in, what you realize is they're not quite ready to see humans because they've never used uh, any of the equipment and they've never looked at an ear before with the, the, the scope and all that. And so I wanna walk you in one of our labs and meet two of our mannequins, okay? And so what we have to be able to do is to have them practice and the mannequins is a good way to do this. And we'll come, we'll start with the mannequin right down here, which you see is a little bit more from an adolescent. So what we have the opportunity to do is we can, ha we have the ears and let's just say that we're gonna practice on cerumen removal. So I've got the cerumen right here. I take this. I load this room and into the ear canal so that then the student has the opportunity to practice on the simulator. So if there's, if, if there's too much insertion of the probe to pull this room and out, we can let them know that. So there's all kinds of ways that we teach with this. Our second simulator, and we've got several of these, um, is one that as you can see uh, from the back of it is electronic. So it can be programmed. So you see the ears. Also these ears are removable as well. So what I can say to the students is, hey, I want you guys to tell me what condition that you see. So they're gonna take the scope, they're gonna go in, they're gonna take a look and they're gonna go, I believe that that's, um, and whatever diagnosis that is. And then um, through our phone and through a computer system, the next time that they put the scope in, it can be a different disorder. So it's a really good training tool as we're trying to get them to recognize either middle ear or inner ear problems. So we use a lot of simulation in the first year to help teach our students um, without having to use real life patients or actually standardized patients. So one of the things that we really think about as a distinctive at Sanford, and this is really from a College of Health Sciences, we talk a lot about interprofessional education. We also talk about interprofessional opportunities 
from a clinical standpoint, from a service standpoint. And so we're very blessed in the Doctor of Audiology program is that we have our PT colleagues literally across the hall from us. And if you think about that from um, just a, a teaching standpoint and a therapeutic standpoint um, with vestibular patients, so patients who have difficulty uh, with an inner ear standpoint, what we can do is be able to do the diagnostic piece of that from audiology and then from a physical therapy standpoint, that's where a lot of the management is going to come in. So that's one of those things that we have really worked on here at Sanford University in the college so that we can provide our students with what we refer to as kind of just up to date and the newest kind of research and technology that goes along with teaching and clinicals. We've made it to our hearing aid lab. This piece of equipment right here is called VeriFit. One of the things that's really important um, as you or a person who is about to have hearing aids is that those hearing aids are programmed to exactly what it is that your ears need. So as we were in the booth, we're gonna be able to figure out this DB, this ear needs this DB, this ear needs this DB. And so then what you have to do is program the hearing aid. You can't just have a hearing aid and have them put it on and turn it on and all of a sudden you're like, yay, I can hear. You actually need someone who's qualified, specialized, certified and has the degree to be able to do that. So one of the things that we're gonna provide our students with is the opportunity to learn how to do that from a very, very safe standpoint and also to the best of the ability so that actually the person, the patient, has the very best hearing that they can. Another distinctive of Sanford University that I think I would tell you about is our small class size. Um, we actually wanna be able to offer as many students a seat in our audiology program as possible. We also know that there are 1,800 clinical hours that are required across the, four, the period of four years that our students are with us. Um, so what we wanna be able to do is to have this small class size, we call them a cohort. What I think you'll find with a cohort is that our students bond together very, very quickly and that they work together as a team. We talk about teamwork in the CSDS department a lot because no man is an island and we don't work by ourselves. If you, as you've heard me say, there's a lot of interprofessional experiences and a lot of interprofessionals, professional professionals that are out there that we work with as well. So let me tell you about our last lab, which is actually our electrophysiology lab. Sometimes we might refer to that as our vestibular lab. As patients come to an audiologist and they say things to them like, I'm really dizzy. When I get up from a chair, I find that if I don't hold on, I'm about to you know, fall over, so my balance. And so this electrophysiology lab lets us understand what the eyes and the ears, which from a neurological standpoint, is they're tied together. If you think about it, Think about rocking on a ship. Well, if you're not looking at the horizon, you're looking at the waves, your eyes are going up and down, up and down, just like the waves. So what you wanna be able to do is to make sure that the brain is process, processing what the eyes are seeing and what the ears are doing from a vestibular standpoint or an inner ear standpoint. I'm gonna bring in one of my colleagues and we're gonna show you a little bit about how we measure this. So meet Dr. Holly Ryan, actually our program director of the audiology program. And so Dr. Ryan, why don't you have a seat over here? We're gonna put the goggles on. And so Dr. Ryan, why don't you tell these folks about what goggles you're about to put on? Okay, um, well these goggles allow us to get um, some very close measurements of the eyes. We can actually see what the eyes are doing when we're performing courts and um, assessing the vestibular system so we can hear how the eyes and ears are working together to give responses of um, balance. So why don't you put those on for us? Yeah, there you go. And so as we scan toward the wall and the monitor, what you can see is that, and if you can open your eyes for us, now you see the movement of the eye, you see how the eyes are moving together simultaneously. If Dr. Ryan had a vestibular problem, you might see that there is a, what we refer to as a disconjugate gaze. So one of the eyes might be looking elsewhere or the eyes would not be moving at the same time. Thank you for joining us on this tour today. We're excited about what's gonna happen in the future. If you have any questions, you can find us on the website, sanford.edu. Thank you again.